All right, let's start this morning with something that is on everybody's mind. Cervical cancer has been in news for various reasons. First, for the budget allocation for vaccines for young girls this year. And then it popped up during the conversation between Bill Gates and Prime Minister Modi as well. But did you know that cervical cancer vaccines that are recommended for girls, in fact, are now being considered for men as well? By now, you know that, or you should know, as I say, you know, that cervical cancer is caused by a human, the papilloma virus, it's called the HPV, and it can be totally prevented only if you take the vaccine shot. And this HPV virus can be infected, in, can in, affect, in fact, not just women, but also men. In fact, did you know that almost one in three men worldwide, aged 15 and older, have at least one strain of the HPV? one type of the 150 strains that are really out there. Yes, men can also get HPV. And it's important to know that some types of HPV can also lead to cancer. Even the World Health Organization now has underlined that men can carry these infections. In men, HPV infections often show up as warts in their genital areas, causing discomfort and making it easier to pass HPV to others. HPV is also linked to certain kinds of cancers in men like anal, even throat cancer. In fact, a study published in the Indian Journal of Cancer in 2019 found that the prevalence of HPV infection in Indian men is high and nearly one in four Indian men are infected with the HPV. Now that's an alarming, you know, sort of situation considering that we already knew that the virus is responsible for killing almost 75,000 women from cervical cancer every year. Now we know that it could be damaging for Indian men as well. So let's try and understand this in a bit, a little bit more detail. Now when it comes to cervical cancer, we have spoken about this on the program earlier as well. When we talked about the connection that it has HPV infection has to cervical cancer. Again, important to underline that not everybody who gets the HPV virus will end up with getting cervical cancer. But those who do det are detected of HPV have a very high chance in certain cases. We so far knew that it's mostly for women. Now studies tell us that men are getting it too. And the, and the highlight here is or perhaps the silver lining in all of this is the fact that there is a vaccine which everybody can take now. So let's understand this in detail. I'm joined now by Dr. Dwani Magu, senior consultant and a gynecologist at the department in, uh, in the Apollo Hospital and SCI International Hospital in New Delhi. Good morning, Dr. Magu. Thanks so much for joining us on The Breakfast Club. Let me first, uh, you know, ask a very fundamental question here. Now we understand the difference between cervical and cervical right like cervical the spine and cervix the area that connects you know the narrow end of the uterus that connects uterus to the vagina that's the birth canal really so the first question that really comes to mind is when we talk about cervical cancer men don't have the cervix so how does this really work why are we saying that men are equally at risk Hi, good morning. So, um, you know, thank you so much for having me. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Men don't have a cervix. In fact, you know, I feel that a lot of people are really confused as to uh, what part of the body is cervix. You know, I just want to show you a small model of the uterus. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the uterus, right? And uh, what is the cervix? It is this lower part of the uterus that we call the cervix. So, um, you know, this is the part that holds the uh, baby while you're pregnant. So, and uh, you know, this is the part that we screen for, for cervical cancer. So obviously men mm. don't have a cervix, but uh, why mm. we are trying to vaccinate men? See, uh, HPV virus, it is, uh, you know, there are 150 kinds of these viruses and they are spread both in men and women. So, you know, HPV mm. is a, mostly 99% of the times it's a sexually transmitted virus. 
so mm. uh, even in men you know it is transmitted uh, you know through the sexual routes via you know either it could be an due to oral intercourse or anal intercourse so men mm. are you know more likely to um, get anal cancers oral cancers or penile cancers so that is the reason that you know mm. it is highly recommended now that uh, gardasil 9 vaccine has been launched in india since the last almost 2 years mm. so which is mm. recommended for men to prevent all these kinds of I you see. know oral cancers anal cancers and penile cancers so the vaccine that is out there in the market is it the same for men and women yeah so you know there are variants of this vaccine uh, as of now in india we have three variants so uh, the first one i would start is uh, gardasil 9 which is a nona valent vaccine you know it covers nine strains of mm. this hpv virus and that is uh, advised both for men as well as for women and uh, the second kind of vaccine is gardasil 4 that one as of mm. now the studies have only been done uh, in women so in india we mm. are as of now not recommending gardasil 4 for men and the third one the latest that is launched is the servavac vaccine which is a indian made vaccine and uh, that yeah. is also a quadrivalent vaccine you know that covers only four strains of the virus mm. so that is also as of mm. now mm. Uh, only recommended for women i see i see so how uh, what is exactly the efficacy of these vaccines you know so uh, the efficacy it really depends uh, at uh, what age you are taking the vaccine so that is the reason we mm. recommend that you start taking the vaccine as early as 9 to 10 years for uh, both for mm. boys as well as for girls so the efficacy the gardasil claims uh, is almost 97% if you take it between 9 to 12 years of age and uh, gradually mm. you know over the years the efficacy will keep decreasing so they say uh, between oh, you know around 14 to 18 years you see you're saying the earlier you take the vaccine 86% i see so you're saying earlier you take the vaccine the better chances of it working on your body yes exactly because it takes you know it uh, takes a few years for the uh, vaccine to you know uh, have a, a complete 100% effect so that is why uh, you know some people have this confusion that you know you take it just prior to your for sexual intercourse but it's not like that it has to be taken uh, the ideal time has to be between 9 to 12 years of age i see and what about the side effects of these vaccines since it's going to such young adults you know the vaccine um, as such does not have any uh, major side effects like any vaccine you know you could just uh, have an arm pain because uh, we generally uh, give it in the arm or uh, you could have a slight fever like any other vaccine and there are no uh, you know uh, ma- major side effects of this vaccine are very rare i would say so like even if you take a medicine you could have a side effect so uh, mm. but generally you know we recommend because if this vaccine is claiming to prevent such uh, drastic diseases you know like cervical cancer mm-hmm. anal cancers mm-hmm. and oral mm-hmm. cancers so definitely i think if you weigh the pros and cons you must go ahead and take it all right so uh, tell me this doc so those of us who are in our 30s now men and women both and still want to take the vaccine is it does it make sense to do uh, to take it now should adults should people post their 30s women are most susceptible to cancer in their 30s right so does it make sense to take the vaccine now yes yes definitely uh, you must take the vaccine see uh, you know the efficacy of the vaccine will reduce definitely but still you will get some benefit from the vaccine and uh, also you know there are many times that the women or the men are not exposed to the hpv virus till that age so that is the reason that you know even after deliveries you know a lot of times we are giving the vaccine because uh, in india you never know many women may not be affected with the hpv virus till that age mm-hmm. yeah i think the point you're trying to make is that you might still be affected with the hpv a uh, virus it might not convert into cervical cancer but it's important to take prevention that's uh, that's one bit of it uh, but again there are so many questions on yeah, availability yeah the age limit you know for these yeah for women in fact you know we are giving the vaccine till 45 years of age as of now um, uh, the women can opt to take it uh, till 45 
and also after 45 if a woman feels that she wants to take it she can discuss with her doctor and go ahead and take it for men as of now the age limit is still 26 years but again like i said if uh, men are willing to take the vaccine beyond 26 years they can discuss with their doctors and opt to take the vaccine i see I see. But uh, Dr. Anko, talk to us a little bit about the availability of these vaccines since we now understand that a cheaper version, made in India version is going to be available soon. It's not there in the market just yet. Uh, but would you say this, these vaccines are mostly available in the metros at the moment? No, these are uh, the vaccines are available worldwide, you know, but I really feel that uh, the education and the knowledge regarding these vaccines is um, much more in the metro cities compared to the smaller cities. And even mm. uh, here in the metro cities like Delhi, when I, you know, educate my patients, I see that almost 60 to 70 percent of the women don't know about the vaccine. So mm. uh, availability is definitely mm. there. You know, the Gardasil 4 has been available since 2008 in India. And Gardasil 4 mm. is now, uh, Gardasil 9 is available since last two years. So uh, I feel mm. that, you know, the awareness um, uh, is not there. And now that, you know, mm. the government has launched uh, in the budget also, they are planning to vaccinate all young girls between 9 to 14 years of yeah. age. I think that is a very mm. uh, good step and that will really benefit a lot of girls. Yeah. So, Dr. Mark, and I regarding the cost, there yeah, are, so, from uh, our know, research, we figured out that there are about 150 strains of HPV viruses that are there, right? Now, the vaccines you've spoken about cover, yeah. some cover four, some cover nine strains. So, really, one has to wonder, have we got a full uh, 360 view on this? Because uh, these strains we now understand because of COVID keep evolving, keep changing. Uh, and and there are a whole host of them yeah. really out there. So how effective are these vaccines really? You know, like I said, uh, uh, almost, you know, uh, the Gardasil 9, which is covering the high-risk viruses. See, we are more worried about the high-risk viruses. Yeah, you are right. There are 150 HPV viruses. But what is... Uh, you know, what causes the cancers are the main, you know, um, HPV 16, 18. Those are the main two high-risk viruses and also 6 and 11. So, we are mainly focusing on those viruses. Yeah, there could be some cancers, uh, about say 2 to 3 percent of the chance could be there that you could be affected some, from some other cancer in spite of taking the vaccine. But still, I think 97 percent is a very good uh, number. Uh, and I feel that everyone should go ahead and take the vaccine. I see. I see. All right, Dr. Margo, thanks so much for joining us and clarifying all those queries that we have on cervical cancer over there. Uh, the government is recommending it. Doctors are saying that let's like educate ourselves and understand this. And now the fact that men uh, can get it too, the numbers are really staggering as you pointed out. And the fact that these vaccines actually do cover yes. men, that's something that we must sort of consider and look into as well. Thanks so much, Dr. Margu, for joining us. Yes, thank you so much.